Hey guys, and welcome to Quality Shot. I'm really excited to be joined by Wicketkeeper Batsman, uh, Ollie Robinson. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, mate. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, we were just talking about the snow and uh, don't <laughs> maybe see it too much here in the UK and I don't know whether we can have that much fun with it, but I guess it's the only exciting thing going on right now, apart from maybe some cricket that's going on. <laughs> so good, good, good at least to uh, get that in. Um, I guess then for people at home who are maybe a bit, unfamiliar with um what counter cricketers get up to in the off season you want to maybe just uh, illuminate us to what you get up to in terms of training wise um in the off season yeah so basically i have pretty busy schedules this, this time of year we're not normally this busy but i think well we had a bit of a short season last year i think the boys were pretty pretty keen to get going straight away this year um so i was speaking to steve earlier today and he said yeah, this is the, the most he's hit hit balls in pre-season ever and it's mainly because there's not much else to do so I think most people are doing not doing things for the sake of it but uh, they're working hard but doing what they need to do um, but yeah so basically we, we we run every day pretty much um, we uh, we gym every day and we we bat every day apart from Wednesdays we have Wednesdays off um, okay. and that's it Okay, fair enough. Um, in, t- in terms of your batting, then, um, mm-hmm. so I talked to Sean Dixon from Durham, and he was telling me that it's a lot of like repetition and and working on like cert- uh, if there's a part of your game that you want to work on, it's just hitting the same shot like repetitively, um, and just to kind of get that muscle memory. Is that kind of similar to what you guys are doing as well? Yeah, I think everyone's a bit different. Um, for me, I I've I've focused a lot on my white ball stuff this year, as I've I've seen that as a as a whole, where I can get better, um, I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with my, where my red ball game is at at the moment. Obviously, still working on that, but my white ball is where I want to. I feel like I can take myself to the next level. So I think it's it's developing shots for me. Because I can I can play the shots. It's just make knowing my strengths and actually making them super strengths for me. Um, so that's what I've been kind of focusing on this winter. Well, that's so cool. So you're doing a yeah. little bit of power hitting then, maybe as well. But yeah, a bit of power hitting and then actually. Actually, understanding how I'm going to hit boundaries because I'm not, I'm not the type of person. I'm only what, five foot eight. I'm not going to wipe the wipe the park. Um, but it's, it's finding ways to hit boundaries, and there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So I think at the end of the day, it's me trying to work out how how I can best go about it. Okay, that's cool. So uh, are we talking a bit like uh, your paddle sweeps, your uh, your deal scoops, those types of so- shots, kind of making you a, more of a three sixty cricketer, kind of? Yeah, definitely. I think I think there's. I think the best players in the world, they use the pace of the ball a lot. And I think that's something that I've, I've really tried to work on this year and getting it in, in weird areas, really, and, and give myself some scenarios as to, as to how, I can, how I can hit boundaries and, with a potential field. So it's, it, it's, it's good fun and it's, it's a lot more exciting than Red Bull training, but, but it's, 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 it's still a work in progress. No, that's cool. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, it's exciting though. At least you're getting to, I guess, develop your game and then it'll be nice to see you implement it when the season comes and uh, that's quite cool. Um, also then, I guess, you know, for people who I'm sure a lot of people are quite familiar with, um, you know, who you are, what your background is, but do you want to maybe just touch upon how you got into cricket, your background into it? Yeah, so my, my dad played when I was younger. Um, so obviously I was always there watching him I was always that, that annoying kid who, who they'd ask people to throw balls at in the nets in the corner while they were playing um, so I was there every every Saturday and I think my first memory is, is him is him uh, playing indoor cricket actually and um, I was kind of just lurking about and, and whatever and watching that and I just I kind of always loved it I've always been around it and um, my mum said that my sister's a couple of years younger than me and she said that when I was about three and she was pregnant with my little sister, that she'd, I'd make her throw balls at me in the garden and whatnot. So it's kind of always been in my blood. And it's kind of, it's a dream come true really to be where I am today. Wow. Yeah. That, um, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And you, to be fair, you had a pretty, a pr- very good 2019 in the Red Bull game. <clears throat> I mean, you scored 765 yeah. runs. And as you said, I think your Red Bull game, you said it's coming along and I'm now you're, pretty much uh, you know i'd say you firmed up your spot in nearly all three formats uh, for kent um so how has it felt being around these more 
I mean, more experienced players. You know, there's a lot of players in there. You know, Daniel Bell, Drummond, Zach Crawley's now with England. Yep. Sam Billings as well, because he's a wicket keeper batsman like you. Do you just bounce off these players a lot of the time? Yeah, I think so. I've kind of I've grown up with Zach, so I've kind of seen where Zach's taken his game and how hard he's worked from from the age of about fifteen. So it's it's really nice to see him doing really well now. And I think he's deserved everything he's got. But but yeah, I think the more I can learn and take little bits from everyone, I think the better player I'll be. I'm not just going to try and base my game on one person. Actually, try and take little bits from everyone and try and work out how I can fit that into my game. Um. So yeah, I think it's you, you do learn a lot having been around the players and. And the coaches and whatever. So we've had some great coaches in. We've got Mike Yardy at the moment, who's whose work helped me a lot. Um, uh, John Trott, obviously, some, some great experiences from him and some 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 good bits of advice. Um, Alan Donald in the past has been with us, so we've got some really good people to learn off. Um, so yeah, I think the more you can take from everyone, the better. I think. Mm, that's he's, he's not afraid to ask questions as well. Ask questions and actually, mm. people aren't going to shut you shut you down. They're, like we all we all love cricket. Like it's no, we wouldn't be playing if we didn't love it. So everyone wants to talk about it. So it's no starts questions. That's what I found. <laughs> well, it sounds like the perfect environment for a you know, younger cricketer like you know like yourself. I I can't really call yeah. myself young anymore because I'm a bit older than you. So, <laughs> um, but so I can call you younger. <laughs> but I can't. Yeah. No. I think. Yeah. I, I think, you know, as you said, you've got Alan Donald you've had in the past and Jonathan Trott now, and these guys have, you know, been at the pinnacle of the game. Michael Yardy as well, obviously, played a lot of for England in the past, and they they obviously know their way around the county game as well. So that must be amazing um, to have those guys to um, to pick their brains, as you're saying, and it's great mm. that you have that. Um, in terms of your keeping, actually, oh, because as someone who... So I play for my local club, but I, I'm a bat, so I've got nothing. I really know pretty much nothing about wiki keeping, really. So, for, so, so for um on the channel, you know, when it comes to wiki keeping, I'm like, oh, okay, he's Mr. Stumpy. Let's illuminate us into maybe a little bit of uh, the art of wiki keeping, and you know, what what are you working on in the off season? What do you do? What kind of drills do you do uh, to kind of sharpen up your game? Yeah, so I, I kind of leave my keep until the, not the last minute, but I kind of I leave it as, as long as I can. In terms of keeping, I don't, I don't feel the need that I need to keep right now. Um, so I, I kind of, but I, we've, we've got a week off this week. Um, it's quite fortunate with this now, actually. But, um, but yeah, after this week off, I will be doing some stuff leading up to the season now. Um, but I just kind of, it's just to get moving. It's like anything in, in cricket, like bowling and batting, it's rhythm and confidence. I think the more you can actually keep and get, get overs in your legs and, and, and catch balls, the, the better it's going to be. And I think. You have just got to do the, the hard yards. There's no there's no way around it. It's not the, the keeping drills are good, are good fun, but some can be quite tedious at times. Um, but you, the, when you get a, a good coach who kind of makes up a drill and, and does some funky stuff, then actually makes it really entertaining. And, and I actually love doing it. So, but yeah, I, I, I think it's 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 a really good role to have. I love it. I kind of you're always in the game. You can never switch off. Um, so in that respect, it can be quite tough. But but the fact you're always in the game is, is a really good, really good thing, I think, for me. Mm. And, and I'm not just saying this because you're on, but I think a wiki keeper batsman a little bit underrated their wiki keeping. I think like, wiki keeping mm. as a whole, as a skill and an art, is a little bit underrated. And really, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's like being an all rounder. That's what it is, really. It's just because mm. you're, you know, you're having to, to be, you know, good in two different disciplines, and that that's what all rounder has to do. And so. I think it's just interesting to get your your take on that. So I'm assuming it's a lot of reflex work as well, isn't it? Being a keeper and a lot of kind of reaction um, reaction time, making sure that you're sharp. That's what it sounds like. Is that right? Yeah, it is. And it's, it's just working at, at different things and, and actually finding out how how you best go about it and, and understanding what works for you. It's a bit, a bit like batting and bowling, I guess. It's, and it's, it's very similar to slip fielding drills and, and whatnot. Um but yeah, it's, you do do a lot of reflex stuff, and it's a lot of the time it's the shock of the of a nick. Because if you tense up, then you get yourself in a bad position. And a bit like if you're a bat, and if you suddenly went on tense, you're not going to play it very well. So, so actually, just just relaxing and 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 trying to take all noises out of the situation, so you can just react to the ball. 
Mm. I mean, it must be quite intense as well being behind the stumps for, you know, especially in their longer format because you're behind the stumps mm. for a long time and you're always in the game, as you said. So you've got to stay even more switched on than, of course, you know, in the field, everyone stays switched on, but <clears throat> even yeah. more so you have to. And then you're also batting as well. So it, do you find it's quite intense when you're keeping? I'm, I mean, I'm assuming you're not always keeping because I'm assuming when Sam Billings is playing for Kent, he's keeping. Is that right? I've, I've kept last... I kept the whole year, last two years. Okay, so, wow. kind of in Red Bull cricket that is. Um, but but yeah, it's tough. I batted four a little bit at the, at the start of last year, um, and, and kept. And that, I found that quite tough. That turnaround. But I, I love the challenge of it and really enjoyed doing it. But the the actual turnaround of the of the keeping straight to bat, especially if you lose a couple of early wickets, you're in straight away, and it, it it can be quite quite tough in that respect of the, the kind of You've done your, you've done your jobs, and you've then got to go again. There's no, there's no downtime and no chill time to, to put your training kit on and, and watch the boys <laughs> chat them yeah. out. But, but that basically, it's all good. Like you've got to bat at some point, so why not? Why not do it early? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's, I guess it. It's one of those things that it, it could be, I guess, potentially mentally draining when you've got so much to do. But um, you know, some of the best have done it. It's interesting because um, for New Zealand at the moment, Tom Latham is. He's opening the batting, but obviously they've got BJ Watling who's keeping, but he's yeah. coming towards the back end of his career probably. And there's like a lot of dis- discussion about whether Tom Latham is going to be able to take the gloves whilst opening the batting or whether he needs to drop mm-hmm. down. So it's interesting yeah. that obviously I guess it, it it depends on person to person how whether you mm-hmm. know how they feel in that moment because you don't want anyone to drop because he's in quite good form with the bat opening up. So yeah, that's true. I can't think of who else they've got there, people. Well, they've got Sire haven't they? He could yeah, be, I don't know if he's more of a T20 player, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's more of a T20 white ball player. I don't know how many tests he's played, but yeah, I think yeah. that's why they're, they're thinking about doing that because at some point they're going to have to do that handover, so that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. For, I guess, younger players coming through, even younger than yourself, mm-hmm. so we're talking, you know, kiddies coming through, or, or any younger players watching this, and they're, working, they're budding with a keeper batsman, what kind of advice would you give to them uh, as they're growing up in terms of things that maybe you've learned or they should, they should think about in the back of their minds whilst they're working on the game? Uh, it, I think the biggest bit of advice I had ever given was enjoy it. And the more you enjoy it, the better you, better you do and the more confident you are within yourself. And Actually, just just relax and, and take everything as it comes. And, and yet you will learn the, the higher up the ranks you go the more you pick up from other keepers and other, other players and, and actually you become that a leader on the pitch um, just from keeping being in behind the stumps and you got the best view of the whole game. Mm. Um, you can you can spot things that batters are doing, uh, angles in the field, that's, that's a big thing in white ball cricket now, is angles in the field. Actually, you what, what people have said to me before is actually if you notice anything in the field, then change it. But don't, you, you can be like the fielding captain and I'll be I'll do the bowlers and stuff. Unless obviously it's something drastic. But, but in terms of in small movements, just just do it and and have, having that, that trust is actually quite a nice you know, an important role to have as a keeper. But yeah, I think just enjoy it and and work hard on your batting as well. Because I think you look at people now like Butler Best and those boys are all being they've been picked mainly because of their the amount of runs they score. Um, so I think focus on your batting as well you can score hundreds and it goes a long way yeah that's interesting actually I was going to touch upon that you said about you know Bairstow and Butler and, and keepers nowadays they're not just I feel like maybe 10-15 years back you could be a very, you could be a very good keeper um, and your batting didn't need to be as good as it is now but I feel like there's an expectation yeah. on wicket keeper batsmen that you need to be pretty much performing as well as other batsmen um, and yeah. then you also need to be keeping well to get picked. Do you, do you kind of find that? Do you think that's kind of where cricket is going at the moment? Yeah, I agree. And I think the prime example of that is, is probably Tim Payne at the moment. He, he's been he's been slated recently because of his lack of hundreds for Australia and in first class cricket. And I think it it does take the edge off things in the media and stuff like that if you if you are a very good batsman as well. Um, but I think you do have to be good at both disciplines. You can't you can't just get away with being being a one, a one, how was the word? Um, one trick pony. Got, that's the one. Um, yeah, so you've got to have, 
do have one on one strings here both and actually um actually perform in both aspects but i don't disagree with it really because you have to you can't have for the balance of the team you need your five six batters you, you keep a bats five or six and then your bowlers so for the makeup of the team it, it helps so much as well Mm. No, that, that makes sense. I think because previously you'd, you'd see, as you said, it, it's interesting because you're saying, you know, bat, where keeper batsmen nowadays are in that top five, six. Yeah. But you know, yeah. back in the days, you, you'd see wicket keeper batsmen at eight, nine, yeah. even, potentially sometimes. And, you know, yeah. I think that's how low they were. And nowadays, yeah, they, I think maybe it's probably Gilchrist's fault, isn't it? <laughs> he probably yeah, revolutionized it, isn't it? Because he started opening up yeah. in ODIs and, and hitting hundreds. And um, and obviously you kept really well, so you probably did that. Um, t- talking about those types of legends, as you're growing up, who are your idols then? Uh, growing up, or kind of heroes that you thought, not necessarily that you mold mold your game on, but even just people that you watched and thought, wow, you know, they're special, and you just used to love watching. Yeah, I've got a few keeping ones, especially I've got. I used to love watching Garrett Jones keep. I mean, that that 2005 Ashes was the one for me that kind of inspired me more than anything um, and then as I got a little bit older I love watching Brad Haddon keep he, he used to take some ridiculous catches diving across slips and, and whatever but, but for me the, Gwen Jones was probably the, the big one that actually inspired me to actually want to keep but like the catch he took at I think it was Edgebaston off of Harmison um, but that was kind of always in everyone's memory of Gwen Jones and, and I was lucky enough to actually work with him and do some keeping stuff with him uh, he came down and did some stuff with us at Kent, um, which is very, which is quite surreal, really, because I kind of went and watched him, and then he's he's watching me keep and and, and whatnot now. So so yeah, it's, it's I think he's probably the big one. But KP is I used to love watching KP bat, and and he's he's always been a, been a big big star that I've looked up to in terms of how I want to play my cricket. Um, obviously, I'm not nowhere near as good as he is, but. But if I can get anywhere near it, I think it'd be all right. Yeah, you've still got a lot of time to go, so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think Garrett Jones, yeah, that, as you said, that's amazing, isn't it? Because when you're mm. growing up and you see this person and they're like a hero, and then next thing you know, they're, you know, they're watching you keep or they're doing drills. Yeah. So yeah, it must have been amazing. Do you think, yeah. you know, your generation, well, I say your generation, I am still part of that generation. I'll put myself in that bracket. <laughs> but do you think our generation have maybe been... You know, do you think that that 2005 Ashes had a massive influence on, you know, English cricketers here in the UK? Yeah, I think so. I think mean, definitely do. Yeah. I know a lot of a lot of lads speak about it. Like I saw, um, Jack Leland did an interview the other day with Ken, and he said about how that was the last um, cricket on terrestrial TV, wasn't it? And now obviously it's back now. I think just having that access to it that all people can have now is is such a big big thing. And I think that's that's what got a lot of people into it is actually being able and having that exposure to it. And I think especially now as well, with World Cup winning that last or two years ago now, I think that's kind of reignited it as well. Like a lot, you see a lot more people talking about cricket. I know my mates, they probably I've got a kind of group of fourteen mates outside of cricket, and I reckon three or four of them like cricket, and that, and now they all like cricket mainly because of the World Cup and me playing, but. I think that World Cup had a big, big part to playing it as well. Wow, that's really interesting, actually, that you talk mm. about that. Um, the influence of, I guess, yeah, that, that World Cup as well. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, as someone who's, who's, who's growing up, do you think, you know, you said you're working in a white ball game. Mm. Well, and, you know, nowadays, there is a lot of emphasis, not just on longer format, but you've got three formats to think about. T20s, you know, your one day format and also your longer format in the, the kind of first class or test cricket do you think like in your opinion what do you think about the state of test cricket because I feel like you know the start of this year we've had some really uh, amazing performances I would say um, and mm. some really you know you know I mean that obviously there's that India win in, in at the Gabba yeah you know, I think yeah. it was yesterday Carl Myers for West Indies against yeah. Bangladesh, that huge yeah. that huge knock from him and you know, even now, as you said, England India is on terrestrial TV, so that's great to see. And um, I'm originally, well, I'm from Pakistan, but I was born here, so I'm happy about the Pakistan South Africa series as well. But <laughs> I just, I just dropped that in there as well. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, it's good, right? I think 
Test cricket for me uh, at one point potentially looked like it might be uh, not dying, but I think it wasn't in the best position. Um, mm. But it seems to me that uh, the start of this year has been quite good, uh, and potentially yeah. it might be, you know, in a decent place. What, what's your opinion on that as someone who's a cricketer yourself? How do you think it's maybe been perceived by other players and yourself? I think it's it's still the pinnacle of the game. I think everyone wants to play Test cricket for England. Um, and I, I don't think it is it is dying at all. Like you see these these games now, and like the amazing things Root's been doing, scoring three one fifties back to back to back, and then it just shows like it's, it's such a hard skill to master, and it, it's so much more rewarding, I find, to win a four day game than it is like a a T20 or a one day, just because of how much hard work goes into it. Um, but yeah, I, I think Test cricket is almost as, as strong as it's ever been. So you, especially if you, you can watch India or Australia on BT. You can watch or England now on terrestrial TV, and, and then Pakistan against South Africa on Sky. It's it's an all of the different times, and it's it's such a nice thing to have. A, you can always be watching something, which yeah. is I think pretty really good. You can you can imagine it's a nightmare for me to cover because I work as well. So this isn't my full time <laughs> job. So I'm literally I'm working normally and then I'm doing trying to cover everything. Is uh, it's been a, there are three test matches going on? I think pretty much at the same time or similar times because yeah. there was one in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan. They're all yeah. very similar time zones. So There's a nightmare. But yeah, you're right. I think um, and when you said test cricket is the pinnacle, I, I totally agree with you. And if you hadn't said yeah. that, I was going to end the interview. No, I wasn't going to end the interview. But I, just, I would have said, I probably would have nodded along like, yeah, I agree, I agree. But um, <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Um, and it's, it's really good to hear someone say that as well, because I think, you know, for us, we're not, you know, the, we're not super old. We're still young and, and fresh. And I think it's good that even we're still thinking that test cricket is the pinnacle of, um, so that, that's good to hear. And what's your opinion then on um, on Joe Root? Because you mentioned him. Mm. Um, you know, I think he's he's been a very underrated player. I think not just in here in England, but in the world. And I think maybe the reason for that is there was always a big question mark around his conversion rate. But he seems to yeah. have put to bed pretty quickly at the start of this year, yeah, as you said. Um, I mean, he didn't score a single Test hundred last year, but he still averaged forty eight. So he's scoring a lot of fifties. Mm. Um, and I think the highest number of uh, hundreds he scored in a year was three. So he's already equaled that. Yeah. Um, so he's doing pretty good, let's say that. And, you know, I think he's always mentioned that Fab Four of, you know, Coley Williamson, um, you know, Root and uh, Steve Smith, sorry, even. Yeah. Uh, I feel like each one of those players has had like a defining year, but maybe mm. Root hasn't quite had that. He's been very consistent and, and played very well, but maybe he hasn't had that one blockbuster year. Do you think that, Given that England have, after this, they've got 14 tests left. So they've got a jam-packed schedule this year. Do you think we're going to see a huge year from him? Because I think he's already on 600-plus runs already, and it's only been three test matches. So um, do you think we're going to see that kind of defining year from him? I think so. I think mean, he comes across, I don't, I don't know, but he comes across as this really determined character that, that he just wants to prove people wrong. And I, I think he's... He's done that with flying colours in the last what, month or so, um, but but it's just, it's just the way he goes about and his captaincy as well. I think it's it's a, it's a credit to to English, English cricket. I think and the way he was with that that one fan who was out there in, in Sri Lanka as well, and just nice touches like that. I think actually not only not only is he a hell of a cricketer, but actually seems like a really good bloke as well. Um, but no, I, I think. I think he's, this could be a year where he actually really puts his foot down and makes a mark and put himself up there with, with the likes of Curley and Smith and, and actually score well, potentially thousands this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got enough test matches and if he keeps on scoring the way he is, then you never know. What do you think of his... Um, is the sweep a huge part of the game? I've seen you know, I've seen it a few mm. times. and When you see someone like Root, I mean, I think he's <laughs> has over 300 deliveries he swept in the Sri Lanka series, and that's only two test matches, right? Do you yeah. see him and just think, you know what? Oh, actually, that's something that I should maybe do, be doing more of in my game. Or do you think mm -hmm. actually, um, you know, which other people have said to me, you know, everyone's got different strengths and you kind of just work towards your strengths. Um, or do you think, oh, actually, I can maybe develop that in my game as well? Yeah, I think you've got to have those options available. Um, and I, 
I have been working at that and getting on the Merlin machine and actually just having buckets off the buckets of just, just sweeping, working reverse sweeping and actually having almost four different sweeping options, um, whether that be straight or square or reverse. Um, but but I, think, I think it's such a, a big shot to have, especially in the subcontinent, where, where the ball spins a lot more and actually the margin for error of playing for a straight bat you've only got to miss it but you've only got that much of a bat to play whereas if you've got horizontal bat your, your margin for error is so much so much bigger sorry smaller so actually it's such a good shot to play well whether he plays I don't know however many sweeps he plays if, if that was over here he probably wouldn't he'd probably be a bit more conventional and I think that's that's where he, he sets himself out from the rest is is um, his, his selection and actually knowing when to play shots I, you might not need to sweep over here so he'd actually change his game and use his feet more or, or use the depth of the crease and actually not needing to sweep but I think there was a really interesting article about him um, about his um, interception points against spin and actually he was either right back or right forward and there was I think it was only 13% of the balls faced where he actually played from a from like a one step position so actually I think having that in mind is, actually, is such a key point if you can minimise that that risk of, of allowing the ball to, to not do what you want it to either sitting right back and, and seeing what it does and reacting to it or getting right forward and not allowing it to do that I think you put yourself in a very good position to score to score runs and, and I think he's been so positive in the way he's gone about it as well he's always looked to, to score runs and, and hit boundaries which is the way to go I think because you'd just be sitting duck otherwise and one's got your name on it I think in especially in Sri Lanka where it's a bit more up and down. Yeah, hundred percent. That's really interesting. Actually, I think everyone says, uh, was it the phrase that they use is shot selection. And um, mm. I think he definitely um, utilizes that correctly. Doesn't he from what it looks 100%. like. And it's interesting because I think when he was playing in Sri Lanka, a lot of the England bats would go four to seven balls. And normally I think mm. when you're here in the UK, you'll be coached and taught to go four to some of the deliveries he was actually going back to. But as you're, yeah. but, you know, what you just alluded to, what you're talking about, uh, he'd, he'd go so far back or so far forward that if he went that far back, it didn't matter because he could basically see what was happening after the, yeah. the, the delivery had pitched. So um, it wasn't like he was getting caught or tangled and it worked for him because he, his head was always still and he was like in line while he, whilst he was playing it. So And he was playing it almost under his eyes, which someone like Ken Williamson is really good at um, and how, how he plays it. So... That's really interesting as well that um, they that he does that because it shows that there's different ways of playing and you know I think they showed a graphic when um, Australia were playing India similar to you're talking about interception points and Steve Smith yeah. was intercepting it really late mm. um, whereas Manus Labuschagne who's just as effective really was getting right yeah. out towards the ball and he was batting outside his crease but both were scoring runs um, at the same pace so it was just it's interesting that different things work for different people but I guess it's also about Making sure you're not hesitant, you're being decisive, but choosing what's exactly right. Yeah. yeah, it's being precise. I think, actually, yeah. um, just committing either way. Because yeah. in theory, you can go back to any ball. Um, as a spinner bolts, you can you can almost go back to anything. Like, I mean, I've done drills with that before. We literally just go back to everything and and see see how far you can take it. Okay, that's interesting. I might try that. Yeah. Might try that. <laughs> might try that see it goes. Next thing you know, I'm at LBW and I'm and I'm on the phone to you. Like, what's going on? It didn't work for me. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, You've been hearing about you? the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. How much? Um, how much would you say then of of the game of cricket is uh, mental as a percentage? How much would you give it is mental? Uh, yeah, hi. I reckon seventy five plus. I reckon. I'm a, I'm a strong believer in that. So my son once told me it's a six-inch playing field of cricket from here to here. Um, and I, I believe that because it's, it's it's like anything, though. If, if, you, if, you, if you're determined to do it, you can do it. I, I find the same with running, but I hate running. But if I actually put my mind to it and actually just dig deep, I can do it. And it's a bit like cricket. I find if, if, I, if I'm really there, then I'm determined and if I get a good ball, I get a good ball. But, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to give up from from just like a, not wanting to be there. So actually, I, I think it's a very high. Obviously, there's a lot of skill involved, but actually having the determination to 
to keep going. And especially Root, the way he's gone, it's, gone. it's very easy to score 150 first game in Sri Lanka. I've done my job now. And actually just ease off. He's, he's actually put his foot down and he scored three double hundreds in a row. Yeah. No, 100%. And I think, yeah, you're right. I mean, of course, there's going to be an element of skill. But I feel like when you say about the mental side, it takes mm. a certain person to be that committed to it and, be, and like yourself, play at an elite level. You know, when mm. you talk about being mentally driven and determined, it's, it's not just... I feel like some people might think to themselves, OK, I just need to be concentrated. No, it's almost like a lifestyle, isn't it? I mean, you, you, yeah. got, I mean, you, can, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like with you guys... Cricket is a lifestyle, right? It's like you, yeah. you know, the off season. It's not like you just turn up in April and you've had a couple of nets. You know, you as you just alluded to earlier, you you're working on it all year round, and it's something that you're constantly striving to be better. So um, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, when you get out, actually, you you mentioned that um, the mental side. When you know, when you get out to a good ball, um, or even if you make a mistake. What's your thought after? Because I heard someone say, I think it was Steve Smith saying, when he gets out, he'll just, he'll, I think he walks home or something, he'll walk and he might walk for like a couple of hours. But then as soon as yeah. he gets home, that's he's forgotten about it. And he just, yeah. it doesn't matter, even if it's a city shot, he won't dwell on it. Uh, but I know yeah. some people do. Well, what's your kind of mentality after getting out, uh, if it's maybe even a mistake, I guess? I think it's, you can't change what's happened. It's, it's happened in the moment and it's, it's gone and there's no, like you can be disappointed with yourself and disappointed in that shape, but there's no point in getting angry and throwing your kit and whatever. And I think it's it's, it's very different for for club cricket and, and pro cricket because club cricket you you bat once a weekend. Um, so I think for us it's it's a lot easier to get your head around because you've always kind of got another chance second innings or or the next game. Um, but I, I think it's just a case of parking it, moving on, and, and I find yourself actually going down a bit of a rabbit hole if you start picking holes in it and you kind of just keep spiralling down and down and down actually making issues out of things that aren't issues and overthinking it and I've been guilty of that before um, when actually it probably comes back to me just not watching the ball or not getting my head to the ball and it's actually not as big a deal as I think it is hmm. well, That's interesting and how much, as someone who's you know, you're young and still working in your game hmm. if you had to put a percentage on how much maybe of your ceiling you've reached, how much do you think it is? Um, what, in, a, in different formats or as, as a whole? As a whole, as all format cricketer. Well, if it's all formats, I reckon... <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's tough. Uh, I'm going to say... I want to say 40. Okay. I feel like I've got a lot more I can offer, especially on the white ball side of things. Mm. Um, so I kind of haven't really done much in white ball cricket. Yeah. Um, in that respect, and that, I think that's, that's a real big drive for me, and I just wanted to be better at that. Mm. Um, but if it was red ball cricket alone, I reckon I can a bit higher up in that in that respect, and kind of a bit more of an understanding of how I go about my business yeah. and, and what I do and what I do well. And I'm, I'm getting there with my wild ball stuff and I'm actually beginning to understand how how I play. Mm. Um, but as I say, it's still a, a work in progress for me and I'm, I'm working hard at that to try and get that uh, as good as it can be. Nice. But yeah, I reckon about 40%. That's a... That's a, <laughs> a, that's a, that's a there's there's no right or wrong answer. <laughs> it's just whatever you feel. Um, in terms of actually... So a lot of your you know, your colleagues um, at Kent... Well, I say colleagues. I guess your teammates at Kent and also, um, you know, in county cricket, a lot of them are playing franchise cricket now. You know, a lot of playing in whatever you might be, the IPL, the PSL, the CP. I mean, some are playing in... Like, I, the Daniel Bardrum was playing in the T10 league um, yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of franchise cricket? Would you be open to going around the world and playing it? Oh. <laughs> I would be, yeah. I'm just sitting with my housemate here. And right. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not convinced by the T10 stuff. <laughs> I'm not convinced by it. Um, but, but no, all, all the other stuff is is brilliant. I think I'd love to actually have, be a part of that in some respect. Um, but I think, again, it's, it's such a small minority that actually play in that when you look at the the English players that go around the world and play in these comps. Um, but people like Alex Blake, who 
he just doesn't get picked up. And he's, he's such a, a strong up player for us at Kent and kind of doesn't really get a look in. And it's brilliant that, that Deeps has got his kind of foot on the ladder now with, with that stuff. And I think he's, I'm not sure if he's going PSL or not, but. So he, he's, he, play, he played the LPL, I know. Um, that's right, yeah. I th- I'm not sure if he got if he got picked up in the PSL. No, but, I don't um, know he did. Yeah, but I, I think he he should get picked up in the hundred as a wild card this year. Mm. I reckon he's he's pretty much nailed on for for getting one of those slots. I think if he has another year like he did this year, then I think teams would be silly not to to look at him as an option because I think he's he's a serious player in white cricket, admirable cricket, but he's really taken his white ball game to another level in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'd I'd love to be part of that and. And do that, especially the big bash. Big bash looks class, isn't it? Big bash. Yeah. <laughs> Good weather, you know. Can't. Be, I, I guess also yeah. for you, for you as well. Like, I'm assuming it's good because you get to play in different conditions and get to, you know, really challenge yourself to adapt. To, is that the biggest part of it as well? Yeah, I think so. I think you kind of. I've been to Australia twice now, and I think the more you can challenge yourself in different conditions and expose yourself to that, I think the easier it becomes if you were to do that. At a high level, um, so I've never I've never played in, in the subcontinent or anything like that. So I think that's, I'd obviously like to do that and actually test myself in those conditions and see what what it what it is like. It's very hard to replicate that over here. Um, like a spinning ball doesn't really spin that much in a, yeah. in a sports hall in in January. <laughs> in but, Ken, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I think you kind of you've got to try and push yourself, and and the more you can get away, the better. I think the the more you can expose yourself to to other uh, other ways of other pitches and how teams go about their business. Mm, so there might be a. I think Sean Dixon said to me that Zach Crawley had gone to a spin camp in India, mm. and uh, yeah, so that, that there might yeah, be a camp yeah. like that for you in the future. Is that going? going <laughs> I'd love to do that. Yeah. I'd love to do that. <laughs> the T Ten League, right? It's, it's really interesting because yeah. you said you're not sold on it. Yeah. I, I've got two thoughts on this. And my first thought is, like you, that I wasn't sold on it. And my yeah. second thought was, I think this is a format that they're going to try and use um, to push cricket in the Olympics because it's short enough that they can use it. And I was yeah. thinking to myself, yeah. okay, if this is like a trial to see whether it's going to be used in the Olympics and it might help cricket to be in the Olympics – then is that yeah. a good thing? Because I'm like really big on cricket growing globally. I don't think it's been grown mm. enough. But then the other part of me is thinking, well, hold on. Do I want the whole world to see cricket in this light in T20 cricket? Say, yeah, is that the reflection you want of it? So um, I, I don't know. What, what do you think? Do you think that, would you be happy with T10 cricket in the Olympics? I, I mean, I guess cricket will grow, but are you happy yeah. with it to be shown that way? What do you think? Yeah, I think if, if you've got like a, a good, a good core of players, and it's, it's selected really well. I think international yeah, players, right? Like, yeah. yeah, if you've got international teams playing, I think it could be very good. Um, but yeah, I just, I just, I don't know about it. It's just not. <laughs> I feel like if it's once a year, I'm okay with it. I just don't want yeah. it to get franchised like T20. Yeah, I think it's just so hard to actually to to be good at it. It's you know, you've got no time. Like it's, it's very. But it's very limited to people who hit it out of the park, and there's actually not not that much room for anyone else. And you have to bat in the top four; it's not going to get a go. Um, but it's I don't know. It's it's, it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because cricket is a long game. If you're trying to get it into like an Olympic event and whatever, and it might bring in an audience. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's so yeah. yeah. What what about the hundred? Are you a big yeah. fan of the hundred? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be good. I think it'll be good for British cricket. I think kind of an, another competition to try and try and get into and actually attracting some big players over to play in it. Um, but no, I think it'll be a good competition. I think they've got some good teams in it. Some good people have been picked up. Um, and yeah, I think everyone's kind of wanting to get picked up in it. Because it is the closest thing we've kind of got to to the IPL on the on the scale of things. Mm, okay, well, that's interesting. Like, yeah, I guess in the T Twenty Blast because of yeah, it's, it's really it's a domestic. It's yeah, like, it's not I franchise. think the Blast Blast is a really good standard. Yeah, not but in terms of like the 
Um, there's less scope to get all those superstars, yeah. in, right? Because I think you've got yeah. a limit to overseas. I think there's less overseas players and franchises. And, and I'm assuming, I, mean, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't expect you to say, but I feel like the pay, because it's not franchise, is probably slightly less as well. So probably, yeah, probably. less, less yeah. enticed, uh, probably enticed. Like you wouldn't see it. I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't feel like you'd see like Andre Russell playing T20 mm. Blast, for example. Yeah. I, he played once, I think. He played for Knox a couple of years ago. But yeah, he's like once. Couldn't yeah. come over for, for cheap either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now he's big time. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. What about the um, the new format for the county championship? What do you think? What do you think about it? Have you seen what they're going to uh, do? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it, I think it'd be nice to see how it works. I, I just, I don't think you can beat the Div 1, Div 2. I think that overall winner winning Div One. Uh, we we worked so hard at Kent to get into Div One. Those those well, kind of like a four year period of, of real hard work. Obviously, I was probably, probably wasn't part of the first two years of that, but but the kind of the building blocks were there when I came in. Um, but then, those two years we worked hard to get into Div One. And, and yeah, I, I mean, it's I like the way it's seeded. But yeah, I just don't think you can beat that Div 1, Div 2 mentality of, of wanting to win Div 1. Do you think it's going to be like a trial period? They're going to try it this year and just see how it goes? And I think finish. so, yeah. yeah. I think that's how it'll be. Mm. I think a lot of teams would vote for that Div 1, Div 2. Yeah. And did. I think it's first and second play each other in the Bob for the Bob Willis Trophy. But that's a bit of a strange yeah. one because you've already won the, the county championship yeah. and then it's like, it's just a one-off game. Which yeah, I thought exactly. was a bit strange. What do you think? Community Shield. Community, yeah, Community Shield, yeah. yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what it is, yeah. That's exactly what it is, actually. That's a really good point. That's pretty much it, isn't it? Really. Um, but yeah, I, I think it'll be good. It's, it's nice that, that his, his name's being used on a trophy and in front of it's being played in his honour, which is obviously a big impact on English cricket. Yeah. Um, but no, I think it's, it'll work. It'll work well. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know how it will, if it will last. I think it will end up going back to Div 1, Div 2. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you with that. I, I think I prefer the traditional Div 1, mm. Div 2 and you're working for it. Um, what do you get up to then, apart from, you know, being an avid cricketer and working very hard at your game? What do you get up to, I guess, um, outside of that, maybe with your housemates and stuff? <laughs> He's making you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, not a lot, really, at the moment. We kind of, well, we, we attempted to, to drive in the snow today. That was a bit of a a bit garnished, but we actually we doing a lot of walking in our wellies uh, to Morrison's and back. Um, I'm a great scour, um, but yeah, not a lot really. Kind of play some rubbish games indoors. Bit of Monopoly deal. Um, Monopoly deal, love that. Love yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I, I, I lost last night, so <laughs> it's a good game. don't worry. I always yeah. say I win, but I don't know if I, I probably don't. <laughs> It's when, it's when he when he deals them out and then says, "Oh, I've got rubbish out," and then lays three properties down. Away. It's like, <laughs> like, Come on, mate. Um, but no, yeah, a bit of. Well, we've been watching a lot of cricket recently. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've got big bash, and you wake up and you, you kind of well, the T10 was on a little bit when we were here. Um, but yeah, it's not a lot really. Like normally, we kind of do a bit more, play a bit of golf and whatever. But nice. There's, there's not much to do at the moment, but yeah, as I say, we kind of gym, bat, and, and run every day and have Wednesdays off. But, nice. Are you rooming yeah. with another Kent, Kent player then? Yeah, I got Matt Mills. Ah, unfortunately. Okay. So I might have to shadow might... bats in the mirror. <laughs> I might have to get you to then. tap him up to get him on. <laughs> 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 yeah exactly connections no, that's good um, how do you think then you're talking about all the cricket or just to finish mm. up how do you think you're going to do in India then they're looking in a pretty strong position uh, you know going into day five mm. but how do you think the whole series is going to go I think it'll be a really good series actually I'm not not, not sure how, how many times we're going to knock over that middle order that cheaply so I think under this is a big opportunity to kind of get get foot in the door and, and go one nil up um but I think it's going to be tough tomorrow. That, that last day, it's going to be a tough. Obviously, the ball gets quite soft quite quickly. And I think we've got 20 overs with a new ball towards the end. Um, so, yeah, it'll be a challenge. But but hopefully, the spinners can kind of earn their money and, and land them in a good spot and get some wickets. Mm. 
What's your prediction? Series prediction? Uh, it's four tests, isn't it? Well, I can... I can win it. 3-1. I like that. I like that. I said yeah. two all. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I think no one really gave England a chance to answer the... Um, a lot of people were saying that, but after a very strong performance, I'm sure they'll do well. Um, just finish up then, actually, for the task. What's your, as someone who's a young cricketer, you're doing really well for Ken at the moment. What's your long term ambitions? I mean, is it to play for England? You know, do you have like a set tick list which, where you think this is what I want to achieve in my career? Or is it kind of just see how it comes, see how it goes? Yeah, it? I want to play test cricket for England. I'd love to play all formats for England, but I think if my direct route in at the moment is is in the Red Bull game, I think. Um, but understanding that's not going to happen quickly. Like it's, it's, it's all a it's all a building block. I got an opportunity last year to go over the Lions. It's a really good opportunity. Um, How do you find that? Yeah, it's really good. It's a really good group of lads and, and actually learned a lot just from being there and, and training with them and, and learning off a lot of good players. And I think we're quite lucky to have the group that we did. Um, but I, I, I understand that I'm not going to get to that level unless I do well for Kent. So ultimately, my my main goal now is just to focus on my stuff at Kent and, and see where it takes me, I think, and kind of knock down that door and, and hopefully get an opportunity and take it when it comes. Nice. It's a very uh, level-headed and grounded approach to have, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> which is good, I'm sure. Oh, people would be throwing stuff at the, at the, at the screen <laughs> interview going, what? He says he wants to play for England later this year. We've got such a good side. What's he talking about? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, fingers crossed. You know, you have a fantastic year this year. Do you think you're going to get a full season? Of yeah, I think we will. I think we will. Yeah? Whether we have crowds or not, I'm not sure. I think we will at some point. Well, definitely a percentage of, but I don't, I don't know if we'll get a full crowd. But but yeah, I think we'll play a whole season. Fantastic. Cool. I'm pretty confident about that. Nice. Good. Um, anything you want to touch on before we wrap up? Uh, I don't think so. I think we're all, all good. Yeah. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you very much for being on again. I really appreciate it. Hope uh, I didn't grill you too much. Um, no, we're good. But <laughs> it's funny when you do an interview, you just things come to your head and you just think, yeah. okay, I should ask him that. It's just a really good point. And you brought up some really good um good information. I try and be a sponge as well and take it off you guys. Um, you know, all the knowledge I can because it's, yeah. it's good to get an understanding of, of the game and obviously I'm no, my uh, knowledge base is growing as I talk to you guys so I really appreciate yeah. it um, no yeah all. all the best though anyway with the with the season the upcoming season hope uh, hope you get out to play some golf and uh, hopefully yeah, you beat too. your teammate at Monopoly deal or your roommate at Monopoly <laughs> deal <you mean. laughs> as okay. much she doesn't yeah, cheat with a sleight of hand here <laughs> <laughs> with the what's it called the, the just just say um, no. Yeah. Just yeah. say no, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back pocket. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, we'll cut let's catch up again maybe later in the year if you're if you're out yeah, for definitely. it as well. And uh cool. yeah, all the best, mate. Have a good evening. Cool. Thank you very much. Cheers. Nice to meet you.